At 17, I tried meth, and that's what really got me. I was crying, you know, I was like, am I ever going to, you know, be smart? It is believed to be, in some research studies, very similar to somebody who has a traumatic brain injury. And so this provides kind of a, a bridge, you might say, um, to allow for time to recover, to recover uh, for that prefrontal cortex to get engaged. Substance use touches most, if not all, families in some way. Recovery is a long road for everyone, but for some, there are extra barriers. That's the case with methamphetamine, which is rampant in our community and across the country. A local doctor told me he's seen a tenfold increase in his patients over the last decade, and a local facility said 50% of their clients now come in with meth addiction. Using meth for a long time or in high quantities physically damages the brain so much, Researchers have equated it to a traumatic brain injury. Relating those together, a light bulb went off for experts and out came a solution, using the same simple therapy for both TBI and meth recovery. Well, what led me to my substance use basically was relationship. It was kind of like, um, like if you love me, you'll use with me. Um, and I was really scared. Dana Snyder tried methamphetamine when she was 19. And from there on, it was on and off until I was 35 years old. With losing my kids, you know, destroying relationships, you know, good ones, healthy ones, into, you know, selling drugs because now I had to support my habit. Doing things that I didn't ever think I was going to ever do. And around the age of 16, I tried cocaine. But at 17, I tried meth, and that's what really got me. Ashley Criado fell into the same darkness, initially finding sobriety, but it didn't stick. I ended up relapsing when my youngest at the time was about six months old. I lost my three children, and I was homeless. I experienced a lot um, in that time. 2018, October 4th, 2018, I came back to Alpha. So my sobriety date's October 5th, 2018. Both Criado and Snyder wound up at Alpha Home, a longtime San Antonio residential treatment center for women with substance use disorder. I've been sober for six and a half years. It was in rehab. They started to learn the biology of what had happened to their brain. Did it surprise you how much meth versus other drugs was injuring your brain? Yes, it did. Um, I remember in class I was crying. I was crying, you know, I was like, am I ever going to, you know, be smart. What she learned was scary, that meth can destroy brain cells in crucial areas, more so than a lot of other drugs. So let's look here at the injury to the brain. It typically happens here in the prefrontal cortex, which controls personality, long-term planning, and decision-making. Next, it typically affects the hippocampus right here in the middle, which dictates your memory and learning. A lot of um, hallucinations and delusions. Um, I would see things that weren't there. I would hear things that we're not, um, others could not hear. Definitely uh, memory loss. One of the biggest things was the jolting. Like my eyes would like jolt. It would be, you know, like if you see on a TV screen, how it's kind of like, it goes like into a fizzle. Someone that's in a persistently psychotic state, unfortunately may not have um, the organization, attention, um, and, and wherewithal to to seek treatment, particularly in a complicated health system. Dr. Curtis Bone is an addiction medicine physician with Be Well Texas, a statewide addiction center run out of UT Health San Antonio. Bone says with those intense symptoms, in addition to attention problems and planning abilities, people will have trouble retaining treatment even if they want it. When you have a learning disability, whether it's something you're born with or something that you've damaged because of drug usage, you still need that unique support for whatever it is that you've got. Lisa Jensen is the Alpha Home CEO and learned something very interesting about those meth-induced brain injuries. It is believed to be, in some research studies, very similar to somebody who has a traumatic brain injury. She mentioned military practices, that the VA was using a therapy called contingency management with their traumatic brain injury patients. They soon found it also worked for veterans with substance use disorder. What they have found that is effective is somebody who gets rewarded immediately immediately to help reinforce the learning of a skill or behavior. So it's basically training the brain. Exactly. And the way we do that is that we constantly give them positive reinforcement for what they're doing right. Here's how Alpha Home's contingency management program works. It's a level system that rewards clients for hitting weekly treatment goals like attending classes or meetings. Rewards are then given out in group settings in front of peers. 
The reward for the first week of treatment is a backpack. Level two, a journal. Level three is highlighters, and level four is a bracelet. If a client is not successful, they fill out a learning experience form and do some extra chores. Jensen says the type of reward is not what's important. It's the hit of dopamine the brain gets from accomplishing a task and getting encouragement for it. 30 other people are saying, yay, way to go. That feels good when you've got cheerleaders on your side. So why does that simple thing work physiologically? Methamphetamine is similar to other substances in that it interacts in the reward pathway and causes the release of dopamine euphoria makes people feel good. But when that person stops taking the drug, the brain still needs that reward pathway stimulated. And it's not easy to match the power of something like methamphetamine. And so this provides kind of a, a bridge, you might say, um, to allow for time to recover, to recover uh, for that prefrontal cortex to get engaged. Be Well Texas uses contingency management as well and has the funding to give monetary rewards for small actions. So engaging with recovery communities, for example, or you know, cert reading certain texts, for example, meditating. The answer both centers have found aligns with the research that medications helping with cravings combined with behavioral therapies like contingency management tend to work the best. It gets better. Um, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Snyder and Criado are perfect examples of that. I've been teaching the Monday morning recovery planning. I'm going to be switching to anger management on Thursdays. Both got degrees and have become counselors at Alpha Home and use contingency management with their clients. It's more of a paper, like, hey, good job, you know, and we post it on their door, you know, so they, you know, they get really excited about that. You can see the response. Yes, yes, yeah, they love it. And then in their recovery, you can kind of see how that adds up. Yeah, wow. yeah, they do. They start taking ownership of what they're doing. They start getting honest. They both emphasize brain health, even more so for their clients recovering from meth. Giving out crossword puzzles or word search, like here, you know, exercise your brain a little bit. We do math problems sometimes at the beginning of class. Doing anything to challenge your brain because of the neuroplasticity, right? Your brain's going to be able to heal itself. And that healing has a beautiful ripple effect. Both women reunited with their kids and finding true joy in their lives worth every second of the work it took to get here. The message from everyone we talk to about this subject, this is a dangerous drug and education is key to prevention. But for someone already using meth or any drug for that matter, it's never too late to get help. Be Well Texas has a 24 seven helpline and can connect you or a loved one to almost any type of service. Reach out 888-852-3935. For Solutionaries, I'm Courtney Friedman. There is a lot to discuss here, and we'd like to hear your opinions. Drop a comment below and make sure you hit subscribe to stay up to date with Solutionaries.